So today's blog is about mental health and uh, how my mental health has been affected by my cancer diagnosis. Um, today I am going to attempt to walk up Crook Rise, which is a hill over there somewhere up there. Uh, I haven't done any exercise activity this year, like I said in the other post the other day, bar working. So we're going to see how far I can get. It's only a small hill, but I've brought the walking poles just to aid me if I need it. We'll see how far I can get. So I've only been walking five minutes, still on this long stretch and uh, I'm alright but a bit of chest pain just lets you know that your heart's beating doesn't it pooped shattered not even halfway I'm going to keep going uh, just having a little breather so I thought I might have a talk about the mental health stuff uh, firstly this is helping massively I uh, haven't been out in so long but it's nice to get some fresh air see home from a, a different angle uh, so yes yeah, so when when I was diagnosed I spent the first month afterwards a bit numb uh, just not really thinking about it in between scans and and whatnot and getting results uh, one of the biggest things for me was anxiety um, or also known as scansiety uh, waiting to get results um, uh, that, that was really quite difficult it was difficult on all of us um, my mood swings were so up and down I was very angry uh, and then I'd have moments of just breaking down and then getting angry again. Uh, anger was the biggest thing for me uh, with having surgery in June I felt they should have removed or biopsied the tumour then. Uh, obviously after it was explained to me why they didn't um, I've slowly come to terms with that um, I never got violent angry I'd get angry at stupid silly things walk out the house um, go for a drive try and calm down never got angry with Beth or Caleb uh, me and Beth argued but that's that's what happens in any relationship but it was a bit more exaggerated with what was going on uh, with me. I think I was feeling quite self-absorbed as well in that um, I, I was thinking about myself all the time and how I was feeling, how I'd been affected. I wasn't really thinking about uh, Beth and how she was dealing with it all, especially with uh, working full time, uh, picking up the pieces with Caleb, and uh, and then try to deal with me at the same time. But yeah, anger and anxiety—that's what I struggled with, and I'm sure I'll think of some more things as I bimble very slowly up through these rocks. So I'm about halfway up uh, Crook Rise uh, by all the boulders. Some bloody brilliant climbing around here, bouldering. Uh, so following from, following on from what I was saying a bit further down, uh, my anger was a big thing for me. Uh, Beth got in touch with Mind Matters uh, for me and they have um, set up some counselling sessions 
Uh, my anger is, is nowhere near as bad as what it was. As I've become more, more accepting of my diagnosis, the uh, anxiety of waiting for scans. Um, my last scan was uh, the 18th of December and I got the results on Christmas Eve and that way between the 18th and the 24th was nowhere near as bad as when I was first diagnosed and I had CT of my abdomen and pelvis, MRI, uh, CT of my chest and we were waiting for the results to see whether it spread and that period of time I was still at work I worked for two weeks um, post-diagnosis and I battled, I battled on through uh, with work but I, it was so mentally draining <clears throat> that I'd be at work 8 o'clock in the morning and by lunchtime because I'd, so, I'd, I'd thought about it so much and I'd overthought everything I was absolutely shattered. I'd have to go home and I'd end up sleeping from half 12 till five o'clock before Beth and Caleb got back and that that was for two weeks I did that some days I didn't go in uh, some days I lasted half an hour the only way I can describe what was going on I'd have about an hour of having a laugh with um, Andy and Ollie in the service centre and then I'd remember what was going on and that was it. I'd be silent, I'd be thinking about what the results of the scan were going to be, I'd be thinking about what would happen or what the treatment was going to be if um, if anything came back on the scans, how I was going to deal with it, how I was going to manage, how Beth was going to cope with me being so ill from treatment. Um, cope with me and Caleb and working, whether she'd work, the financial aspect of it. All of that got so on top of me um, that I, I, I wasn't really functioning um, as I should. Like I said earlier, I was I was numb to it. I well, is numb the right word? Maybe I, maybe I wasn't numb. I, I've always considered myself that I was, but maybe I wasn't. Maybe I. I reacted really badly to it but again it's a cancer diagnosis and I'm sure that's how everyone reacts um, there is there is no definitive way that you are supposed to react when you're diagnosed with a type of cancer um, the when we got the results of the scan it, it wasn't good news it wasn't bad news they, they weren't saying that I had more tumours, but what they were saying was, again, that there were unidentifiable objects um, around and behind my heart. So that, which they've, they've turned around and said is a post-surgery, post-surgical changes. I got that phone call at seven o'clock on Monday evening, so right at the beginning of November. Uh, the next day I went into work, I sat down with my boss, my supervisor, head of HR, and I just said to them that I'm throwing the towel in. I can't continue to come into work, focus on what I'm supposed to be doing. It's a pretty serious job. We're fixing auto B layers that go at the top of climbing walls and we're servicing them. And that needed to be done correctly and my mind needed to be 100% focused on that when I was doing it. So for that reason, I decided to, as I said, throw the towel in and I stopped working. There was then a six, well, probably a week and a half, two weeks between me finishing work and having um, my first session of radiotherapy, which was supposed to be on the 14th of November, but that got put back two days. They were finishing off my planning and in that two weeks, I sat at home every day, wanting to go out on my bike, wanting to be active. And the mental block side of it was telling me that I couldn't, I couldn't do that. 
um, I couldn't do the washing, I couldn't put the washing out, do the washing up, put the stuff in the dishwasher, clean Caleb's clothes, put his toys away. I just sat on my lazy ass and did nothing. I watched Global Mountain Bike Network on YouTube and photography videos and videos about Mount Everest and thinking about what I was going to do post cancer and that, that's a good thing I think I, I was telling myself what I was going to do and how I was going to do stuff but there was that sway like I was saying about when I was at work I'd have a good two or three hours and then I'd be sitting on the sofa thinking about my diagnosis and because it's so rare I looked on Google and I read countless um, case studies um, and PDFs. I, I tried to find as much information as I could about my type of sarcoma. And because I wasn't getting the information from the doctors because they didn't know, that didn't help me. I suppose I'm, I'm going to wrap this section of, of the vlog up. Say so have how I have dealt with it and how I am managing it now and that is doing things like this even though this is the first time I've done it this year it's safe to say I'm having surgery on the 30th of January and even if I only get another 100 meters up here because it gets a bit steeper that's that's an achievement if I can do this once twice a week just walking up small hills even if I get my bike out and go on the flat down the old railway in Irby that's better than sitting at home. I, I feel 10 times better already just for getting out for, I've been going an hour now, exactly an hour I've been going and I, I feel better. And hopefully that will tonight when Beth and Caleb get back, make my attitude better at home. Maybe I'll be in a happier mood and we can all benefit from these little things. So I think that's what that's what I'm saying and that's what I'm trying to advocate. To be positive, you have to do positive things. No more sitting on the sofa, watching videos about getting out in the hills or walking around reservoirs. It's time to get out and do it. I've got a month till surgery. Hello? I've got a month till surgery, so I'm going to make the most of it because I know for sure I'm going to be on my back for a good few months after that surgery. So here's to a positive month. Well, I'm here. I'm at the top of Crook Rise, and I'm not going to lie, I'm uh, pretty proud of myself. Uh, haven't done any walking at all in 2018. And oh, what date are we on today? Third, fourth, I, I don't even know what the date is today. Um, three or four days into the new year. Four days. And um, it's not four days, is it? <laughs> I, I don't know. But anyway, lose track of time. I'm here. Not that high, but start as you mean to go on for the year I suspect well for the next month at least anyway well I, uh, I brought my drone up here because I wanted to film some cool shots of the surrounding areas uh, I didn't check my rotors though and one of them flew off as I was trying to take off so no itself buy some more rotors for my drone um, lens mug secret Santa gift from someone from work uh, thank you very much for the coffee and this was very good uh, so I'm here at the top it's quite cold I've been here for about 20 minutes sat down had some more food and I've really kind of been reflecting on stuff that's gone on in 2018 there's a nice gentleman up here about um, just after I got up here 
and we're having a chat and he was telling me about his goals. Um, he, is, he was 65 years old, is 65 years old, and he was saying that he was um, diagnosed with something to do with it, pericardium, pericarditis, something like that. Uh, and his goals for 2019 to walk a thousand miles in the year, uh, reach 65 trig points. Uh, he's already on number two doing this today. Um, finish off the weighing rights, he's only got two left to do. Uh, that's pretty impressive. I'd love to do the weighing rights. Uh, um, we, we got chatting about stuff, uh, talking about what I'm doing up here, why why I'm doing it, about creating more of a positive attitude. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I was telling him that my goal, 2021, is to get to Everest Base Camp. Now, that's quite a big feat, I think. Um, so we don't know how the surgery is going to go, but that's that's my goal. Everest Base Camp 2021. Um, I'd like people to join me. Now I've got a good friend, Steve. He's um, very up for it. We, we've talked about it for years. Um, uh, what, what makes me think about that? He was saying that he had a friend that when uh, he was 30 years old was uh, diagnosed with cancer in the jaw. And after his surgery, um, he was saying to this guy that I was just talking to, that he wanted to go to Machu Picchu, if that's how you pronounce it. And this guy told him to go and do it. So he did. He went off to Machu Picchu and achieved his goal. Ah, that gives me a lot of motivation to do what I want to do. And that is Everest Base Camp. People laugh at me and say, you're only going to have bloody half a lung, you're not going to get up there. <laughs> but why not? Uh, so yeah, this is where I live. Skipton's just over there. Uh, Pendle Hill, right in the background. Don't think you'll be able to see it. It's a bit foggy and I live in here, but it's just over there somewhere. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm, I'm going to head back down. I'm going to say that this small little walk in the beginning of January 2019 has made me feel so much better. Uh, so I hope that it does the same for anyone else watching this that may be in a difficult situation at the moment, uh, be it being diagnosed with cancer, living with cancer, uh, or any other ailment disability or mental health issues because that, that's what this was about if you, there are plenty of people out there that are struggling just with the daily trials and tribulations of life so my advice is just try and be positive that's that's all you you can be I was on one side note with what happened with my dad in 2017 he, he was he had a major stroke he's paralyzed on his left hand side um if that had happened 10 years ago um when i was 19 years old i i wouldn't have been able to to deal with that or push on through because because it's my dad but i was saying to my mum when that was going on and, and to Beth, that there, there is nothing else you can do. You, you just got to push on, be positive, because there is no alternative. And with my current situation, circumstances, it's the same. From what I was saying earlier on, a bit further downhill, the, there are going to be times that I'm going to have low points, I'm going to be pissed off, I'm going to be angry. But today is a turning point. All the support I've had from people from my recent videos um, and, and my friends and family that already knew is just giving me a real boost of motivation, positivity. Um, that's where I'm at today. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed 
this and I'll probably make another post video in next week so when I attempt to walk up Simon's seat which is over there it's a bit bigger more rocky but gotta give it a go eh thank you very much